What I'm about to share with you, I only have just a few words to describe it. The Pope wants a Sunday law now. This is serious. And I know that we have looked at many articles before when we have seen and heard about the Sunday movement that we were told about. But this is very serious. The following articles that we are going to look at, we are going to see how the Roman Catholic Church have been pushing for Sunday laws within some countries and now the Pope is frustrated with some nations of this world because they have not yet implement, notice carefully, they have not yet implement Laudato Si, which once again calls for Sunday law. So keep that in mind. In the encyclical Laudato Si, once again, the Pope tells us that the solution for the climate problem is Sunday sacredness. Now, four years later, the Pope is frustrated with the leaders of the nations of this world because a few of them, like the U.S., is withdrawing from the Paris Climate Change Agreement in 2015, which the Pope when he published his Laudato Si and Silicon in June of the same year, published it with the intention to influence the agreement and what the agreement should be about, that the solution is Sunday law. And in part two, which I'll cover based on this article from Cook's Magazine, we are going to address how God has given us a respite of time that we should have had a Sunday law already based on what we are going to look at, but it will cover that in part two. Notice with me what this article says here from Life Sight, December 6, 2019. Pope Francis does what? Urges United Nations to save the poor from climate change. Once again, this is a language that he uses often. To save the poor, it means to uphold the common good. Notice with me what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Volume 4 of Manuscript Releases 278. Soon, the Sunday laws will be what? Enforced. And men in position of trust will be embittered against the little handful of God's commandment keeping people. The dragon as Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, is enraged right now, brothers and sisters. Like, again, the Bible tells us with the woman and will go about to make war with the remnant of the seed of the woman. Why? Because they keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Notice with me what the Bible tells us here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 6. And I saw the woman, what? drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wonder with great admiration, who is that woman in Bible prophecy? That is none other than the papacy. That woman was guilty of drunken with the blood of the martyred of Jesus, martyrs of Jesus, faithful followers of Jesus Christ for 1,260 years during the Dark Ages. And the woman, as I mentioned, is frustrated right now. And the woman is angry right now. Notice carefully what the Guardian tells us here. Climate crisis is challenge of civilization, says who? Says Pope. Pontiff calls on COP25, which is going on right now. COP25 leaders to show what are the words, political will to safeguard healthy planet. What does he mean by political will? He's talking about some of these leaders that are not too in agreement with what they can see behind this uh, climate change agenda. Some of them see what's coming and uh, some of them are withdrawing or are taking their time to see if that's the right decision to make. Pray for those leaders, brothers and sisters. But notice now, as I mentioned, what is the political will? What does that mean to show political will, as he said there? Notice what he is talking about. Notice, from Cook's Magazine, December 6, 2019, Pope Vince, what, 
are the words vents frustration over lack of political will there's the phrase again to implement what laudato si do you see it to implement laudato si look at it once again what do we find in laudato si a call for Sunday sacredness. So now, to implement Laudato Si, meaning to legislate Sunday sacredness. Notice, let's read. A little more than four years after Pope Francis published one of his most provocative documents, not to mention perhaps his most political, in the form of his eco encyclical Laudato Si, the pontiff appears increasingly, notice, disappointed in the way the environmental manifesto been received in a december 4th message to the u.n climate change conference summit in madrid he said we must seriously ask ourselves if there is the political will to allocate with honesty responsibility and courage more human financial and technological resources to mitigate the negative effects of what else of climate change again he's pressuring he's influencing after four years of the publication of laudato si he's telling the religious leaders and the political leaders it's time for a sunday law we need a sunday law now that's what the pope is saying notice next laudato si itself was largely published to notice carefully to influence global discussion on the climate issue as it came out just before the COP21 climate summit in Paris. Since then, climate change has been a major talking point between Francis and most world leaders he meets. Not only does he give a copy of the encyclical to every official or head of state he meets, but the climate issue frequently pops up in routine papal water, papal speech. Now, mind you, this is Cook's magazine, a Catholic magazine. So we are not reading from uh, a secondary source or a third party here. We're talking, uh, recording, I should say, and hearing from the horse's mouth. Notice, next, it goes on to say, in a conversation with who Jesuits from East Asia during his recent visit to Thailand. A lot have happened there. Francis said the COP21 meeting was truly a step forward in the battle for environmental protection. However, he lamented that conflicts bubble up after Laudato Si and the Paris Agreement saying compromises were made between what was assumed and the purse, the economic interest of some countries. What he is referring to here, like Donald Trump put the economic interests of the United States first, that's why he, what he is lamenting here. This is why he's been teaching and pressuring nation to, to not put your country first, but put sovereignty first, global leadership, one person at the head of it. Who is that? That's the Pope. Notice carefully with me. And well, one more point here. This is in this context here in Thailand that we had Adventists as well meeting with the Pope. And what was the Pope pushing there with the Jesuits? A Sunday law. And also remember we have leaders within us like Mark Finley who said last year that the Paris Climate Change Agreement had nothing to do with the Pope Laudato Si. Those leaders are leading us to the wolves. Notice carefully, it goes on to say, in remarks to the 48 Jesuits present for the conversation in Thailand, the text of which was published on the Italian Jesuit-run newspaper, La Civelta Cattolica, Francis said that people are generally much more aware of the need to care for the environment, especially who? Among youth. He alluded to climate rallies led by Swedish teen Greta Thunberg and the student-led strikes she launched, saying the recent climate movements created by young people are the road on which to walk, go in water, 
forward. Now, do you see why Greta Thunberg was raised for such a time as this? To cause the leaders, to cause parents, to cause the majority to take action, to pressure the political leaders to take action. Remember? Popular demand. The Bible tells us, or Spirit of Prophecy tells us, the Sunday law will come about through popular demand. And notice once again this video of Greta Thunberg after she met with the Pope and what she was promoting. Notice carefully. Hi, my name is Greta Thunberg. I'm a climate activist and I just met with Pope Francis and he was very kind and he, uh, he told us that we should continue like we do now and he supports the school strike, um, the big school strike that is happening on May 24th, which also happened to be on the anniversary of Laudato Si. And so I urge you to join the climate strike and we, we will take it to the street fight for our future until the politicians do something. And once again, what do they call Greta Thunberg movement Friday for the future? And as we looked at before, now they are calling for what? It's no longer Friday for the future. Now it is what? Sunday for the future. The Pope wants a Sunday law now. This is the reason why, again, these young people are skipping school every Friday, going out, striking, and saying, that we need a future. What happened on Friday? They killed Jesus Christ. That's what's going to happen. The Romans, we can hear rather, the rumbling of the Roman army. Notice carefully, let's keep going. Today, it is the young people, the Pope says, who are able to understand with their heart that the survival of the planet is a fundamental issue. They understand Laudato Si with their hearts. He said, adding that we must continue to work so that the fundamental message that Laudato Si intends to communicate is shared worldwide. In other words, we need to what? Implement Laudato Si. We need to have a worldwide Sunday law. Again, the Pope is calling for this now. And we have nations right now that are doing this in different ways. Legislating Sunday, for example, the Catholic Church has been influencing many nations in Europe to legislate Sunday for a long time now. Notice carefully this article here. It says Sunday shopping ban. Where? In Croatia. Croatia Parliament has passed a law forcing shops to close on Sundays in a concession to whom? To the Roman Catholic Church. In a concession to whom? To Roman Catholic Church. Now this was in 2008. And when this happened, there were still some shops that could uh, be open on Sunday and especially in some holidays. So it was not strict. But notice now fast forward to 2017. Headline says Catholic Church wants to ban working on Sunday. The Croatian Bishops Conference has again launched an initiative to legally forbid working on Sunday. Notice now they are pushing for it to legally forbid working on Sunday. So in 2008, when they push for it, they, the law still allow some shops to open on Sunday. But in 2017, now they were pushing for a complete ban on this. Notice. It called on Croatian citizens to support the initiative and contribute to the preservation of Sunday in its historical meaning as a non-working day, which is an opportunity for a family reunion. So in 2017, two years ago, they were pushing for a complete ban. Where are we today? Fast forward to 2019 now. Notice, President supports initiative for what? Work Free Sunday. President Colinda Grabal said that she supported an initiative to for non-working Sunday, announcing that she would ask the relevant ministry to consider the proposal to adapt, what's the word, legislation that would protect workers and assist families after the president receives representatives of the Croatian Sunday Alliance in her office. One of the representatives 
for the Alliance and former MEP Marijana Patir underscored that Sunday was what? Family time. Let's keep reading. She presented findings of a survey showing citizens see Sunday as family time, which is why they ask for non-working Sundays. The survey conducted earlier this year showed that 80, what's the percentage? 82% of Croatians support the introduction of a work-free Sunday in all stores in Croatia. What again did Spirit of Prophecy tell us? That the Sunday movement will come through because of popular demand. 82% of the nation of Croatia agree that we need to keep Sunday holy. 82%. Notice carefully with me. Next, it goes on to say, not only do stores that are open on Sundays fail to contribute to the economy, employers themselves have realized that due to the drain of the labor force, staying open on Sundays is not worth it. And many of them are hopeful that legislation will be adapted, banning work in the retail sector on Sunday. Some have even decided of their own accord not to work on Sundays. A new law would just reflect real needs and the will of almost, what is it, the majority, two-thirds of Croatian citizens. Well, brothers and sisters, when it comes to a matter of conscience, as Spirit Prophecy tells us, the majority has no power. What is playing here? That's Revelation chapter 13. The enforcement of the Sunday law coming. Verses 15 through 17, what we are also seeing is that many nations now, even in South America, are ready. They already have their Sunday laws in place, waiting, as we were told, that it is the United States of America who is going to lead out in enforcing Sunday law. So by the time the United States of America is ready, and I believe is right upon us, all these nations will make that transition. Well, they already have some form of Sunday law, but they will make that transition to enforce it. Revelation 13 is playing. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Volume 3 of Selected Messages 392. There will be a what? A universal bond of union. One great harmony. And what else? A confederacy of Satan's forces. She was referring to the Sunday law. The whole world will be in harmony. The whole world will be in unity, as she says, a great bond of union. And who's behind it? Satan forces. And at this time, what must God's people do? We need to come together. Stop the fighting, the bickering among us. Come together based on the truth. As the Bible says, forgiving one another. If anyone has ought against each other, forgive that person as Christ forgive us. That's how, that's what we need right now. Unity also among us. As these people are coming together, are they coming together to glorify God or the beast? Notice what Revelation chapter 17 verses 13 and 14 tells us. These have what? One mind and shall give their power and strength to whom? Unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, but what will happen? And the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. And the Lamb, as it says, shall overcome Him. Who is the Lamb? Is that Jesus directly, physically, that they're going to make war with and overcome them? No, it's talking about the Lamb in the person of His saints. Talking about you and I, as we were told that we must overcome the beast, its mark, the number of His name. But in the meanwhile, as I mentioned in the beginning, we should have had a Sunday law already according to the Pope. But God, based on Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, in His because of His love and mercy, grace for you and I, He's been holding back the winds of tribe because he sees that we are not ready. But how long can he hold it? And meanwhile, we have a work to do. Notice carefully with me what Spirit of Prophecy tells us. 
a moment of respite has been, what's the word? Graciously given us of God. Every power, what is it? Every power lent us of heaven is to be used in doing the work assigned us by the Lord for those who are perishing in ignorance. The warning message is to be sounded in where? All parts of the world. There must be no delay. The truth must be proclaimed in where? In the dark places of the earth. The truth must be proclaimed in the dark places of the earth. So it is time for us to work while it is day because the night cometh when no man can work. Again, the Pope wants a Sunday law now. Brothers and sisters, we need to get ready and get ready and stay ready because the master is soon to come. May God give us strength in these last days. May God give us a zeal to go wherever he calls us to go, to do whatever he calls us to do, to finish the work that he started and also to finish the work that he started in us. May God richly bless you.